from Africa that can create their own clones. They may have millions of copies. A group of scientists have discovered that certain South African honeybees can create identical copies of themselves. What's more, a single individual can clone itself millions of times. And this ability allows it to master the hives of its rivals. The damage to the hives of the African honeybee, Apis melliferus gutella, is caused by an invisible, internal enemy. It's about a growing, seemingly indestructible army of clones of a competing subspecies. All because the workers of a competing subspecies, the South African honeybee, Apis mellifera capensis, otherwise known as the cape, can create perfect copies of themselves. One individual has cloned itself millions of times over the past three decades. According to research published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society B, thanks to the ability to create their own clones, South African bees sneak into the hives of their lowland rivals and produce copies of themselves inside, taking over the hive. Even worse, these clones are often freeloaders and refuse to do any work. Asexual reproduction, parthenogenesis, is not uncommon in the insect world, but having offspring genetically identical to the parent is. This is because during reproduction, the genetic material is mixed up in a process called recombination. As a result, even if there is only one parent, its offspring have a slightly different genetic makeup. However, South African Cape bees have developed a remarkable ability to clone themselves while successfully avoiding recombination during reproduction. This allows them to consistently recreate a perfect copy of themselves, i.e. simply create clones. According to the researchers, Bypassing the process of reshuffling the gene pool is something unprecedented. It's amazing, but also incredibly dysfunctional, says lead author Professor Benjamin Aldroyd of the University of Sydney. And yet, somehow bees manage to lay eggs without reshuffling the gene pool. Ed. It's crazy. I've never heard of anything like this before. As already mentioned, Honeybee workers and other social insects have the ability to reproduce asexually. Females produce female offspring from unfertilized eggs. This rare type of parthenogenesis, called the litoki, has only been observed in about 1,500 species. Each time, however, this process is accompanied by a reshuffling of the gene pool. This ensures that even with one parent, future offspring will be genetically diverse. However, nothing replaces sexual reproduction. Each new generation of worker bees reproducing in this way loses about a third of its genetic diversity, which can lead to death after several generations. Therefore, most social insects rely on the queen to reproduce sexually on their behalf. In return, genetically diverse workers keep the colony healthy and protect the offspring. Just like in human society, we have a tension between what's good for the individual and what's good for society. And we invent social norms that allow us to function, says Aldroyd. In honeybee societies, one thing that has evolved to suppress selfish behavior is that worker bees generally cannot lay eggs. According to the expert, similar rules apply to the cape bee, which generally reproduces like other social insects. Workers of this subspecies, however, have a mutation that allows them to lay eggs with all genetic material, without any reshuffling. With this ability, they can prevent a generational loss of genetic diversity. In other words, the mutation allows insects to clone themselves whenever they want for decades. Even if in the long run it leads to a population that has no genetic diversity at all. This, 
superpower of cloning upsets the balance between individualism and community, which in turn may lead to the extinction of the species, the researchers argue. To understand how clones can make millions of copies of themselves and still remain functional, Aldroyd and his team compared the genomes of Cape worker bees with those of the queen and her offspring. In total, the team examined the DNA of dozens of larvae hatched from eggs laid by the queen and worker bees of a South African bee. The larvae hatched in the process of asexual reproduction. The researchers found that the recombination rate of the queen's offspring was 100 times higher than that of the genetically identical cloned worker offspring. This suggests that workers have evolved a mutation that prevents DNA recombination, which in turn allows them to constantly make copies of themselves. The ability of workers to clone at will puts their colonies in precarious situations, especially when the queen leaves or dies. Instead of devoting energy to getting the colony back on its feet, the workers have their own selfish agendas, such as finding a way to place their clones in positions of power. For example, if we remove the queen from the hive, Instead of raising a new queen as other bee species do, the Cape worker bees will start laying eggs themselves, says Aldroyd. The researcher also believes that the worker bees of this species can dump eggs into the cells containing the larvae of future queens. One lineage of Cape worker bees took social parasitism even further. Insects no longer need a queen and exist solely by taking over the hives of the African honeybee. The clones sneak into the hives of competing bees and lay as many eggs as they can. The owners of the hive confuse the eggs with their own and tend to them. The larvae then send signals to feed as much as possible, causing them to enlarge their bodies and grow to almost queen size. Cape bee clones don't do any work inside the hive, because they've become capable of reproducing, says Aldroyd. They just walk around the hive and feed on the work of others. This very quickly leads to the collapse of the hive. As individuals, these clones are quite dysfunctional, so you'd expect them to self-destruct. But in this respect they resemble cancer cells, adds the scientist. According to Aldroyd, the worker Cape bees that are involved in this parasitism are genetically identical descendants of a single worker bee that lived in 1990. This single line of clones is responsible for the demise of 10% of African honeybee colonies each year. Scientists want to conduct further research on hive collapse and worker cloning in Africa. They hope to find mechanisms that allow you to turn on and off the ability to clone insects.